Intro into uh, 1976 classic mini uh, rebuild. This is just a um, a quick milestone video because we've reached a bit of a milestone on it. Um, getting ready for putting some paint, some um, epoxy primer on it. So that's uh, that's a big deal. Also have a bit of a uh, look at where we are with the engine and a few other things as well. So enjoy the video. Uh, big thank, uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, I appreciate that. If you do get time to put a, a thumbs up on the video, that always helps. I don't make anything out of these videos. Um, I don't intend to either. I don't want any, um, any free beers, any drinks, or I'm not going to be selling any t-shirts or stickers or anything like that. Um, so it's all about passing on my experiences and any knowledge I gain. Um, obviously it costs me money for the software and the time to do the editing and stuff, because that can take ages. So yeah, just a thumbs up would be great, or a thumbs down. Um, yeah, enjoy the video. Well, it's nearly the end of June 2022. <laughs> Don't know where this year's gone. Um, I feel a storm coming. Yeah, I've been really busy. Um, don't remember where I was last time I did a video. I think I was talking about possibly going to the mini metro show at Gaiden. Uh, that didn't happen. I wussed out of that. Um, I checked the uh, weather app and it said torrential rain, thunder and lightning, um, which kind of put me off. But I don't think it was as bad as that looking at some of the videos. Um, looked like they tried to make a real go of it, but I just uh, I just kind of lost my mojo for that. But I did go to the, um, the Mini uh, VW one at Kings Winford Rugby Club in the Dudley area. Um, the weather was better and that was a nice day. Uh, but you'd probably uh, see the video of that if you look at my other ones, because I think that one should be out there by now. So, yeah, I've been really busy. I've been hitting stuff and smashing stuff, uh, as usual. Uh, I've had a bit of a move around, because um, if I want to do any painting of this shell, I could do with getting it somewhere where it's not going to spray paint all over the place. So I want to try and get it in the, in the kind of the garage area where I keep my other car. So, yeah, this is, um, this is the move around. So I've moved the car from, from under there to here, so when it's on the rotisserie it can just go back through those curtains there into that little room and I can try and isolate um, all the overspraying stuff. Well, I've got a little vent up in the in the ceiling there and I've also put a, a vent through the wall so I'll move this mini out and pull that other one in and try and get extract as much through filters if possible um, to the outside try and get some decent um, air mass 
masks and things like that. So this is where we are with the shell. It might look a bit more advanced than the last video, but it's not really. All it's had done is the, the welding was finished off, which you probably saw. Um, and then I would just give the shell a bit of a rub down, a bit of a scratchy, scratchy rub down, sprayed it with some um, screw fix zinc primer. Uh, rubbing down is a bit of a pain. I didn't video it because it's just boring to watch. But it takes bloody ages. So all the all the insides done. It's nice when it's all one colour, but this is going to be rubbed back again for when I do the uh, epoxy um, primer on it. Just key back, nothing, nothing major. Um, see the reinforcing panel I did there on the on the bulkhead. Rubbing down all in here and under there was was boring. Uh, rubbed down the inside of the doors, keep those up. I stripped these aluminium skin doors back with uh, with paint stripper we got the stripper in got the panther in strip those back to bare metal so in essence it, it, it is going to be almost a bare metal respray but not quite because there are going to be some little odds and sods of old paint on there but there's no filler on the shell at all. It is basically all metal. Um, but once I've epoxied it, I'm going to have some light, thin skims of fillering to do, like on these rear quarter repairs, where I've bashed out some damage in that area, the old aerial hole. Little bits of repairs I've done on the Air splitter rail up there, little bits where panels have come in there. I did lead load that off camera, unfortunately. Maybe one day I'll do a video on the lead loading. I'm, I'm now master of it. Um, most of it ends up on the floor, to be honest. But it looks good. I did have a problem getting the car back on the rotisserie and off that wooden frame so I couldn't get the subframe out I had to do this uh, which I might have shown you before I've had to do this detachable panel it's held in by two little screws and I've decided to go smooth on the front so I've taken off the uh, the bumper angle drilled that out it's going to need some little skims of filler just to smooth that off and make it proper smooth I'll probably go um, smooth on the bonnet as well so I'll take the lip off the bonnet it'll be Mark 1-esque on the front not too sure of the grille yet whether it's going to be a moustached Mark 1 type or maybe a minivan um, bolt on type not sure yet. Again with the number plate I'm not sure, maybe the number plate will get bolted to the grill. Maybe it'll be a sticker on the bonnet or maybe it'll be a sticker down in the valance area again. But I spent all this time trying to make it um, traditional and then I go and do something stupid like that. There you go, that's what takes your fancy. Yeah, door's got a few dings in here and there. Probably most of them caused by me swinging them open or forgetting to tie them back when it's on the rotisserie and I spin the rotisserie and the doors fly open. So there's little bits of scabby areas still, all metal, um, but they're going to need a bit of uh, light, light skin. So yeah, it, it's quite inspiring when you see it all one colour it'll be even more inspiring when it's got the epoxy on there and I can start just fine tuning it I've got the door gaps pretty good 
and messing around with the with the packers behind the, the hinges down there. I also have a a trick of wedging it shut here and cl clamping that there to try and drag drag the top part of the window frame where I want it to try and even out these gaps. Yeah, so crunching some of this up uh, just to try and get this gap constant. So that's where we are with the shell. I'm not too sure of the sequence of events for painting it. I'm going to do the underneath first while it's on the rotisserie. So epoxy and then I've got some what have I got? Some big spanners. Got some. Oh, it's Gravitex. That's the stuff you can um, paint over. I think the other one you can't paint, you have to tint it. But that one you can paint over. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. So that's where we are. We've moved the car. It's off the stand, it's back on the rotisserie, spinning it over for and round and round for painting as much as I can. Moved it in the workshop so I can get it in and out of that booth area there. Um, so yes, good advancement on the shell. I've got some prep to do on the on a boot lid I've got. Picked up this quite solid one here. Uh, it's got a little ding in that corner there but I think it was worth saving because it is quite solid and I've got this uh, it's quite solid MPI bonnet as well the reason I've gone for that is we're taking this off there's a bit of scabbiness behind there but I'm going to smooth, smooth that off as I've just mentioned and the um, all the bonnet bits are still on it. The little hook catch is in the MPI position, which is slightly diff different because I will be having my radiator in a different position. So um, that makes it easy. I don't know if you can see it down there, yeah. There's that hook. It is more towards the middle of the bonnet. Whilst on a traditional Mark III, it's over on the other side. It's got the on its style and stuff. Uh, what we got in here? Well, I've been cleaning up this uh, micro subframe. I thought it was pretty clean to be honest when I was looking at it. It's amazing how much crap you get off them when you start scratching at them and wire brushing them. So it's not all down to bare metal but it's pretty close I finished welding this dog leg around the, the pulley because I wasn't convinced of, of the arguments going on whether the, you can cut the pulley off or not cut the pulley off this this is the sacrificial one here this must have driven ancillary items on the on the micro some people cut it off but then it's got some kind of harmonic properties balancing things are being talked about so I didn't want to risk it I'm going to leave it on proud to myself a bit of work my dog legging it but it looks alright um, got the alternator on this idler wheel here for the belt this belt I've got isn't long enough it's, it's uh, 900mm long one and I've seen photos with with this belt this 900mm belt on there and took it underneath this took it underneath this uh, this jockey wheel here but there's no way that's going to work on that um, I've had to order a couple of longer belts to try so I'm not sure why I've seen other people use 900mm long belts I've got this feeling, this being a 1.4 engine, whether the distances between these pulleys is greater, possibly. 
maybe the engine's slightly wider than a normal 1.3 or 1 litre, I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, it looks it looks good in the nestled there, cradled in the subframe. Not happy with this, uh, not happy or happy, happy with this beast of a exhaust manifold. It's not very pretty to look at. It probably works. And that pipe swings down and uh, under the sump at the bottom there. Yeah. This was the area which was failing on the on the um, on the valance, which is why I had to have that removable little panel on the valance. There was no way this this subframe was coming up and down. So yeah, that's been done. Um, there's some other little modifications. Modified this rear this rear um, engine mount here because this this part here this steel u channel bit was and this was welded on there it was part of the subframe but I couldn't get the engine up and down the engine had to come up and down vertically like that for me to get it in and there was no way I was getting this big 1.4 gearbox to swing underneath this big lump sticking out so I made it, cut it off and I've made it detachable. What I did was I, these are 12mm bolts, M12. I threaded the outer skin of this box here. Uh, and then these nuts fastened into there so they were sticking out and then I welded the back. So there's no way this, this box section here can collapse or distort. These bolts are literally fastened onto the two walls. We have thread that side and welded that side and then some captive nylock nuts hold it on. And then it gets mounted in that area. Now, uh, yeah, gear linkages, I've been looking a little bit at that. Um, just put you on this stand here. see there we go so yeah that's not very good is it though that's shocking shocking I'll tilt that down like that as you can see there I've positioned the micro which is the rear gear selector me mechanism. I've positioned that onto the the mount on the back of the gearbox there so you can see the position of the micro one and I've just laid in place the position of where the mini one would be. So you can see the physical distance there is, is much greater on the length of the, mi of the micro control rods there so they've got to be cut back I'm getting some advice on that which is um, I'm, I'm thankful for that uh, the only problem I've got is I seem to be missing a like a gearbox mounting bracket here which will determine the the bolting on of this control arm here this this arm because whatever I cut off these two here, and these two are tubes by the way, they're not solid, they're hollow tubes I've been told, is whatever I cut off this one, I'll cut off that one, because there must be some relationship between the two, but I'm not confident at the moment of the position of this control rod, because I've got physically fresh air to bolt it to. I could make a bracket but I just don't know how big that bracket is so if anybody can help me get some dimensions or even sell me one of these brackets I will put a photo um, will put a photo somewhere on here showing the bracket I'm on about anybody help me get one of these 
micro gearbox mounting type brackets to help me bolt this control arm on. I'd appreciate that. Or if you can't do that, maybe some dimensions of it. So yeah, um, I'm getting there with that. Come on, mate. 